skills made easy and the tools that you'll use in order to do research on careers like being a hand model. Oh, and before I get started, sorry, I, I totally forgot about introduction. You might be wondering why 12 year old is teaching you today. Well, my name is Adora Speedhawk, and at the age of seven, I published my first book called Flying Fingers, and more recently, I published a second book called Dancing Fingers, which is a book of poetry, poetry that I co-authored with my older sister. I'm just getting tongue-tied today. All right, so um, you guys are all back from spring break then. on spring break as well, so and, and she had to go back to school recently, and, and she was complaining about that. But um, yeah, so research skills is really important. Um, they're really important to have, not just for the projects that you do in school, but also for your life. So research is crucial in many aspects of both academic, personal, and business life, and research skills help you live your life to the fullest. So in order to build these life skills, we practice research at school by working on essays and other research projects. When you write a paper for school, you need to use research to find information, evidence, and support and details. And you've probably used research in your own life to determine things like the best kind of shoe to wear or what brand of pet food to buy. Business research is used in business to determine where our customer base is located, uh, business growth, profit margins, and really countless other things. So how do you use research? Would anyone like to tell me, how do you use research? catalog 
for certain words. You can limit it to one library or many, or to books that are on hold or books that are on hold. And you can also search by keyword. So what is a keyword? Because 
Uh, the fact that they list their sources means that they didn't plagiarize. Um, so listing your sources is really important to avoid plagiarism. Uh, but anyone like tell me what's plagiarism? You can take somebody's writing and you don't like their name or whatever? Yeah, when you take somebody's writing and you don't uh, credit it to them. So, uh, for instance, if in this book, if they just took something from this book, The Movie Han, and put it in their book and didn't mention them, that would be plagiarism. So the bibliography in the book is important to avoid plagiarism. Another reason you might check the bibliography is to ensure that the book you're reading is relevant and that it has correct information. So if it doesn't cite any sources or only cites one source, then you might want to be wary. A good source should usually cite quite a few. So as you can see, this is just the selected bibliography and it runs for a few pages. So um, good sources will usually have fairly long bibliographies that have credible books and websites listed. Another reason you can check the bibliography or list of sources is because looking at the books that the author of one book used, you can go to those books and find uh, information that has to do with what you're looking for. So, have you ever faced a giant thick book and not known where to start? If so, then check if the book has an index. Anyone know what an index is? It tells you where things are. Yeah, it's like the contents. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like the contents, only it's in the back of the book usually. So the index is an alphabetical list of all these words uh, or names or terms that were in the book. So for example, um, geological time spans on ice ages, Matt B. Roth. So it's arranged alphabetically, and it has the page number next to the word. So if you're looking for occurrences of family tree of man, then I know that I go to page 384 just by looking at the index. So if you're looking for something, it's a giant book, and you don't know where to start, go to the index. So here's some information about the ways books are sorted. Uh, they're organized in two broad categories, nonfiction and fiction. Um, and it can be organized in a variety of ways, from the author's last name to the Dewey Decimal System or the Library of Congress system. Um, so that's the Dewey Decimal System and the Library of Congress system. Um, yeah, so print sources are where you will find a lot of great information. Um, and it's usually good to cite a few print sources in your research paper because uh, it, gives, it gives your paper a little more credibility. And always get a variety of different sources. So try to get at least one print source, like a book, and at least one web source, um, like a website. Speaking of websites, now uh, let's go to researching from online sources. So raise your hand if you think you do most of your research online. I see some raised hands. Oops, um, two books knocked each other over. Um, so researching from online sources is really important for the reason that a lot of people use the internet uh, in their research. So, um, this is a breaking piece of news. Did you know that Britney Spears was killed in a car accident? Or that robots were used to win the Spanish-American War of 1898? Raise your hand if you believe me. <laughs> I see some raised hands, and, but only like two. I can't believe the rest of you don't believe me. I found it on the internet. It has to be true. Well, as you might have heard, not everything on the internet is true. So if not everything on the internet is true, should we still use the internet for research? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear a lot of yes. Well, in my opinion, the internet is kind of like the world. There are some good places and there are some bad places. I haven't heard anyone saying, oh, we shouldn't live on the world because it has some bad places. So research is a search for information that allows us to create informed essays, rich stories, winning science projects, and blogs and web pages. We research to discover facts, like Mexican bandit and revolutionary Pancho Villa was born in Durango, Mexico. Once we have the facts in place, we research more to add detail to our project. For example, Mexican bandit and revolutionary Pancho Villa was born in Durango, Mexico, a state of craggy mountains and gorgeous blue skies. If you follow basic safety rules and learn how to spot tricksters, the internet can provide amazing photographs, source documents such as journal entries and letters, and treasure troves of accurate information. So here's tip number three. Your most basic and important tool is your search engine. Uh, what are a few search engines? Bing. Bing, yep, Bing 
is it a search engine? What are some others? Google Ask. Google Ask. Ask.com. Ask.com, ask yep. Um, Yahoo. Video. I'm sorry? Video. Isn't that a video sharing site? Other search engines include Yahoo, Bing, Ask.com. Um, so the search engine is important because that's where you go when you're going to the internet for your research. You type in your keyword in your search engine. But even if you choose the right search engine, it doesn't guarantee that you'll immediately find all of the information you need. So let's pretend that you're writing a research paper about Paris, France, and the French Revolution. So I'm going to hop on over to Google or Bing or Ask or... Um, whatever search engine, let me get it open, and search Paris. So um, I search Paris, and I get the Paris Convention and Visitor's Office. I get Paris Travel Information and Travel Guide. I get a picture of the Eiffel Tower. I get Paris Hilton, and I get the Las Vegas Hotel and Casino of Paris. So tell me what's wrong with that search. If I'm looking for information on the French Revolution in Paris, What's wrong with the search I just did? Detail, right. If I just search Paris, I'm getting the Paris Hilton, I'm getting the Paris Hotel and Casino, I'm getting the Paris Convention Center. So, step number one, or tip number four, sorry, is narrow your search. So instead of searching Paris, I could have searched Paris, France, and gotten Paris Hilton out of there. Or I could have done Paris and the French Revolution. So narrowing your search is an important first step when it comes to getting good search results. Now, have you ever run a search on Google or Bing or whatever and, and gotten like 20 million results? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. narrowing your search can help you cut off, I don't know, maybe 2 million of those. Maybe a little less. So if, another thing that you can do is if you'd like to return results from a specific site, like pbs.org or from a certain type of domain, like .edu, then you add site colon blank after your search keyword. So for example, I could do French Revolution site pbs.org, and I would get Marie Antoinette, uh, French Revolution, Napoleon, politics and polling time. So I would get these results from pbs.org. Now, uh, one of the reasons I might search pbs.org is if I knew that they had done a TV series on the French Revolution. Or if I was looking at history.com, I could do French Revolution site history.com. So if you only want to return results from one site or from a kind of specific kind of site, like a college's website, then do the site colon blank whatever. Now you can also try searching a trusted website such as pbs.org or Britannica Encyclopedia. Some other group websites to research include NPR, BBC, and NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So trusted websites are ones that you know will give you good information and won't uh, have bias or incorrect information. Once you find a web page or article that contains information that may be useful to you, it's time to play detective. A good detective runs background checks on people involved in a case, and as a researcher, you'll want to do the same. So if you find a good web article, type the author's name to a search engine or look on Amazon.com to see if they've written any books about your topic. So what I said earlier about Poncho Villa coming from Durango, a state of uh, craggy mountains um, and gorgeous blue skies, came from this article, The Food of Durango, Mexico's Wild West, by Karen Hirsch Graber. So once it has a link, I can click Karen Hirsch Graber and see what it says on Next Connect. Um, so Karen Hirsch Graber spent several years directing English's second language program, blah, blah. She has written food and travel articles for all of these things. So looking at the about page of an author on the website, um, it's one thing. Another thing you could do is go to Google, search Karen Hirsch Graber, and you'll get a uh, Karen Hirsch Graber menu, kitchen consulting. So what does this tell me about Karen Hirsch Graber? That, I, that the results show some books she's written, etc. She, look, she likes to write. She's an, she's an expert. Yeah, exactly. So if you are reading this article about the food of Durango, Mexico's Wild West, and you type in Karen Hirschfaber, 
and you see that she's written lots of books on the topic, that she's a menu and kitchen person, that she's an expert. That's important because you need to know that your author is qualified to write on that issue. Do they know what they're talking about? If I, uh, if you see an article that I wrote about AP Calculus and you research me, you will realize that I know nothing about AP Calculus and you can know not to trust whatever I've written. So run those background checks on the authors. You might uh, search their name in a search engine, click their name on the website to learn more about them. So you could try putting that author's name, uh, type author's name in the search engine. So yeah, so that's tip number six, investigate the author. Um, other questions you might want to ask yourself. I'm sorry? I can stop you right there. I'm, I'm happy to follow along with the note sheet, and I want to make sure that they got that. Um, sure. Because if you look kind of towards the middle of the paper, it says, what can you do to check and see if an author of a book or back of the article is a credible source? What did she just show you? Background check. You can do a background check using Google. Okay, so you can answer that. Put words on It's been by... No problem. Yeah, that's great. I, yeah, and I'm glad you're taking notes because that means you'll take more from it too. Yes, yeah, so you can try clicking on the author's name. You can run a background check by typing their name into a search engine. Yeah, so those would be some ways that you can investigate more about the author. Um, you might ask yourself, is the writer qualified to write on the subject? So that's one of the things you'd learn. Uh, is the person an expert, like Karen Hirschgraber, or an eyewitness to the events described in the source? Is the source complete? Uh, does the author document his or her claims with other source materials, and are those sources credible? So those are just uh, a few questions you might want to ask yourself quickly while you're um, reviewing authors. And if your author is a common name, like Anthony Wright, you might add their area of expertise in the search engine, Anthony Wright, plus Mexico. But investigating the authors isn't good enough. You also have to investigate the website itself. So some websites are safe bets because they represent an organization you already know about and trust, like PBS or Library of Congress or Dictionary.com. But other websites that you don't know much about um, are more questionable. So here are some questions to ask while investigating the website. Is the grammar and punctuation correct? Why would that be so important? Is the grammar and punctuation correct? Well, um, so here are some questions to ask while investigating the website. One of them is, is the grammar and punctuation correct? Why do you think that would be important to ask? Yes, they, they might care 
about keeping your dog healthy and all that, but, but the main goal of their website is probably to say how great Ims Pet Food is and to sell that to you. So if you're looking for an objective, that means not a buy, it's not leaning one way or another, um, if you're looking for a good source on which pet food is best for your dog or cat, then going to the Ions Pet Food website might not be great because their goal is to sell you that pet food, and so of course they'll say ours is the best. Does the website include sources such as a bibliography or footnotes that tells where the web authors obtain their information? Just like it's important to see a bibliography in a real book, it is important to see one online. The About or About Us section of the website can also provide important clues about an organization's goals. So in order to put uh, some of these questions into practice, let's go ahead and visit a website called All About Explorers. So it has this um, on Explorers A to Z. So what explorers should we look at? Um, Vasco and Nunez de Balboa, John Cabot, Jacques Cartier, Samuel de Champlain, Christopher Columbus, Sir Francis Drake, Vasco da Gama, Henry Hudson, Juan Ponce de Leon, Lewis and Clark, Ferdinand Magellan, Francisco Pizarro, Hernando de Soto, or Amerigo Vespucci. Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus. Okay, great. You know, I, I said that way fast, so I'm uh, glad that you heard that. Okay, so Christopher Columbus. Let's see, it's loaded. Great, so Christopher Columbus. What does it say here? Christopher Columbus was born in 1951 in Sydney, Australia. His home was on the sea, and Christopher longed to become an explorer and sailor. However, as a young man, Christopher went to Portugal and got involved in the map-making business with his brother Bartholomew. This business made Columbus a rich man. His books of maps are still found today in every library in the world. Um, let's see. Um, so he wanted to find a sailing route around Africa to China, Japan, India. Um, King John II of Portugal, along with kings of France and England, thought Columbus was crazy. In 1942, he set sail with three ships, the Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. On October 12th, he landed on an island south of Florida. He claimed this island for Spain and named it the Indies. Oh, wait, what is wrong with this? No idea. Let's, let's read on a little bit.
so you don't get off track, but also try to look for a website whose goals match your own. If you go to allaboutexplorers.com, their goal uh, is to make a point about the internet, not to give you correct information. So that would be um, something to realize. You need to make sure that the website you're going to, that their goal is to give you correct information and not to, say, sell a product. Now, when using an organization's website, be aware of any bias that the organization might have. What is bias? You tell us. Can I hear you tell us? Um, okay. Sure, I will. Uh, but I will ask you about it later. Um, <laughs> bias is basically leaning in one direction or another. If you've ever seen two scales side by side, you know, like in Justice, you have that scale thingy. Anyway, if one is a little heavier than the other, if you're leaning in one direction, so let's say you are arguing with your brother or sister, um, one of your parents comes over and is like, man, you are so great. I can't even believe that your brother or sister is arguing with you. They are so awful. Just, just get them out of here. That would be biased, and your parents are also not supposed to do that. Um, so a website, however, often does that. They, they might be biased. So if you go to the Irons Pet Food website, sorry, I said the If you go to the Irons Pet Food website, they will be biased in favor of their own dog and cat food. There are many reasons to create a website. People create websites to provide information, sell products or services, entertain, convince, or sometimes all of the above. So a lot of times you will be able to find bias just by looking at what they're trying to do. If they're trying to sell you stuff, then sure they'll be biased in favor of their own product. Tip number nine. Domain names such as .org and .com can help us decipher a website's purpose, what they're trying to do. So here's an activity. Guess the domain name. Let's start with .edu. What does .edu stand for? Education. Education. Very good. So who would use a .edu domain? Who would use a .edu domain?
organization, that's for nonprofits. So a nonprofit uh, would usually, it might be a charity. So for instance, uh, Save the Children, the United Nations Children's Fund. Um, it might be, um, a nonprofit is basically something that doesn't make money off of ads or something like that. So a .org website um, is for a nonprofit. Now what might the goal of a .org website be? to a website, um, like, I don't know, people for the ethical treatment of animals, they're going to be saying, stop eating meat, and, I don't know, yeah, something like that. So if you go to an organization website, uh, then it could be to inform, but it could also be to um, persuade. So yeah, organization websites, sometimes trustworthy, but, but can have bias, so be careful about that. Um, dot gov. Transportation will tell you about transportation. You know, there are different departments that will tell you about various things. But yeah, government usually tells you about government. Dot mill. Any guesses on dot M I L? Military. Yeah, exactly. So, um, kind of like the government website, it might want to tell you about the government, it might want to tell you about the military, um, but another thing a dot mill website might want to be trying to do is recruit you to join the army. So yeah, all of these, uh, most of these will have a bias in some way or another. There's not much you can do to avoid it. A .edu website, for instance, it might be saying our university is so great. A .com website is going to say our product is so great. A .org website is going to say our organization and our message is so great. A .gov website is going to say our government is so great. And a dot .mill website is probably going to say the military is so great. But all of these biases you can kind of weed out when you go to the website and, and, and you see the .edu, the .com, the .org, the .gov, or the .mil, then you know this is a bias a website might have. So knowing the domains can be usually really handy. Some other ones um, are .net, stands for network, used by internet service providers, web hosting companies, and uh, businesses. .biz is a small business website. .info is a resource website. So, just a few. Now, here are some tips for online research. Um, narrow your search. Don't search Paris. Get Paris Hilton and the Paris Casino out of there. Do Paris France or Paris French Revolution. Um, search trusted websites like PBS, BBC. Um, investigate the author. Run those background checks. Search your name in Google. Click on their name if it's linked. Uh, unfamiliar websites may be more questionable. If you've never heard of it in your life, do a little research on it and use domain names like .edu, .com, etc. to give you clues about content. So another thing you want to do is verify online information. Um, so you will find bias in books. Um, you, you will find usually bias everywhere. But it's easier, it's far easier to create a website than it is to publish a book. So you might find more bias sometimes on the internet and you need to really weed that out. Um, and the authors of online content might be biased in favor of a certain individual. If you go to my website, adorasvtalk.com, it's going to tell you all about my, you know, publishing a book and speaking at various places and, and um, how wonderful I am pretty much. And it will, it will neglect to tell you that I argue with my sister a ton and that I can be really annoying and that, I'm, um, and that my closet is super messy. Those are just a few things. So bias is everywhere. Try to, you know, investigate. Which brings me to evaluating sources of information. So check it for source, timeliness, bias, and purpose. Um, so source would be the author, where they get their information from. Timeliness would be is it recent, has it been updated. Bias, we learned about is it leaning in favor of one thing or another. Purpose is what is it trying to do. And when using the web for research, be sure to get information that represents more than one perspective. Now for organizing and using research. So let's say you're at the library, maybe you're
grab a text card, write down an author, title, publisher, uh, just to keep track of um, that, and then you can um, organize it in your bibliography later. And another thing you might want to do is read general sources first and then move on to more detailed ones. Um, and, and a good thing to do in order to make sure that you're um, avoiding plagiarism, if you ever copy and paste something from a website, put quotes around it to indicate that it came from someone else. Um, you might paraphrase it later, but you still would need to cite them and connect the source to what you've already written. Um, so now for citing your sources. Plagiarism, as we talked about, is using another person's work without giving them credit. And it's really important that you avoid that. And so always give your source for quotations. If you're copying and pasting something, if you're taking what something you said and putting it into words, um, summarize information, paraphrase information. What is paraphrasing? Putting in your own words. Putting in your own words, yeah, exactly. Uh, facts that are not common knowledge. So something super obscure, like um, a Doris Vitox closet is really messy. You would need to cite on that. Um, whereas Barack Obama is the President of the United States, who does not know that? Um, ideas including opinions and thoughts about what particular facts mean. So if you're taking what somebody said about, oh, this event in this book is symbolistic of this, then you need to cite them. Uh, maps, charts, graphs, data, and other visual or statistical information. So stuff like this or that um, you need to cite for. Um, so examples of plagiarism would be copying classmates' lab report, buying an essay on the internet, copying a poem claiming it is your own. But plagiarism can happen in ways that you might not notice, like copying and pasting some on a source, maybe changing only one or two words and then saying it was your own. So that would be plagiarism too. You need to be really careful about that. And always list all your sources in a bibliography. Um, so one tool that I used, and uh, I know that you guys are doing MLA, oops, wait, 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 sorry. Um, I know that you guys are doing MLA um, sourcing. So I was recently making my bibliography for my research paper. Paper. Um, so for print sources, then this would be how you might do it. So for instance, you would have the author, um, title, publisher, and city of the publisher, when it was published, and what kind of source it was, print or online. So citing your sources is super important, um, and don't forget to do that. Um, are there any um, questions on anything which I just talked about? I mean, there 
there will be some .com websites that are great, and there will be some .com websites that are just terrible. Um, you can't immediately tell, uh, you can't say all .com websites will be great. Some will be, some will. .edu are usually good, so that would be education from a college or a university. Those would probably be trustworthy, um, typically. .org might be good, it might have some good information since they're non-profits, but also it might be nice in favor of that organization. So, um, .edu, .org, .gov are pretty good, um, but you always need to investigate and, and make sure that it's not biased um, too much. Which one's more reliable? Which one's more reliable? Um, well, yeah, it really depends. Um, personally, I would say a .edu website would usually be pretty reliable. It is a college, university, they're trying to spread information. Um, but, you know, it really depends. Again, there might be information on a .edu website that's outdated or something. So, always investigate. I guess .edu would be pretty good. And does anyone have questions either about research in general or anything else on their notes they forgot to fill out or questions about me? You can ask away.
much because I get to speak to so many people and uh, meet so many great people and I get a lot of fulfillment from my books, but I'm not like a millionaire, sadly. One of them went for five thousand U.S. dollars, and in total, that auction uh, collected thirty thousand U.S. dollars for uh, to help schools that were affected by flooding there. So that was quite a bit of money. Um, and then also uh, recently, I've been working to save the children. I'm one of their youth ambassadors, um, and I was able to raise six hundred and fifteen dollars for the Haiti relief effort. I love to write uh, short stories, long stories, poetry, uh, articles, all kinds of stuff pretty much. What do I want to be when I grow up? Um, I would like to be a teacher and also a journalist um, and, and a writer, so publishing books, uh, teaching students, yeah. Walked 
in. Um, she's like, um, but I guess I'm okay with the, ch if, if, if you could call what my mom puts at home Chinese food, she does this weird, like, fusion cuisine. I mean, like, ravioli and tofu. Yeah, so I guess I kind of like Chinese food. And one more question, anyone? Why did I decide to start writing in the first place? Um, mainly because I liked reading and I thought, okay, these writers are having fun, maybe I can give this a try. And so I did, and it was fun. Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed learning about research skills made easy. Bye. Thanks, everyone.